Oh, oh, breaking news, breaking news. Uh, hang on, Papa Left, I'm because good. the Woj bomb is here. Evan Fournier, a four-year deal, which could be worth as much as $78 million. Oh, so Fournier to the Knicks is uh, being <laughs> finalized, people. Four year, seventy eight million dollars. Let, let me do my math right here, right now, fellas. Uh, let me see. One carry to <laughs> carry to two, carry to two. Seventeen. Seventeen. They gave, nine, they gave him an extra year. They gave him an extra year. Okay, they gave him an extra year. All right. Well, it, nine, it would be nineteen and a half. No, right? nineteen. I'm but, tripping. but I did read a report that. Yeah, I'm tripping. Um, nineteen, nineteen. Appreciate the math. Yeah. Go ahead. I did read a report that he was holding out for a fourth, but um, that fourth is likely a team option. Yeah, I hope so. All right. So it could still end up being, quote, unquote, a three-year deal. Yeah. All right, Papa Left. Here it is. What, what, what's your thoughts, man? Fresh off the uh, press. You know, for, for, Fournier and Burks, it seems a little bit redundant to me. I think they play the same role. I did actually call back last year, and I – compared the two players. I think Fournier can finish a little bit better at the rim, and he's just a more diverse scorer. He can play off the ball much better than Alec Burks. He can space the floor much better. But I think that pretty much rounds out their starting five. I just wanted to make one more point. I, I like if we are – I don't know if it's confirmed about bringing Derrick Rose back, but one of the issues with Derrick Rose is when he was starting, he had to guard the top point guard on the team, which in, or was the worst-case scenario was Trey Young. And it tired him out, and yeah. I think he plays so well against that backup point guard. So if it was against the Hawks, for example, it would be against Sharif Cooper and Derrick Rose would, or, or Lou Williams. You know, and, and Derrick Rose has an advantage there, I think. Yeah. So I, I'm looking at the point guard uh, position. Uh, you know, Reggie Jackson that impressed the hell out of me in terms of his playoff um, performance. Um, so I, I think he would be a nice guy to bring in, but. I really do think that the Knicks cannot do this game or bust approach and not acquire a young point guard in the process because you're going to look at the way Derrick Rose unlocked, and I know I'm taking a lot of time, but I know, yeah. look at the way Derrick Rose unlocked OB and IQ last year in the yeah. middle of the year. I think I want 45, 48 minutes of that, and I don't know if Vildoza and IQ can necessarily – Make those guys better on pick and rolls and, and, right. and, and in the Well, well you, you just made things, the case for play I, development. I think we have bro. to be more aggressive. You, you just made the point for play development. And, and, and along what you're saying, I think it's the point that you have to have quality veterans in here to help this team win games and help make these young guys better. And I thought that's what Rose did last year. He helped IQ. <laughs> I thought right. Rose took I want a next full step. 48 of it, though. That, that's, that's my biggest thing. Is I think Rose is great for that 20-minute, yes. yeah. 8-minute yeah. stretches, yeah. maybe yeah. even put him in at the end of the game. But I want a 48-minute commitment to that, um, especially if you're going to dangle out an OB or an IQ for a Damian Lillard trade without trading RJ. So I think you need, you need a full attack here. As I felt like our attack was inconsistent because we, we were trying to get um, – you know, throw back Rose every night, and then we, we coupled him with Alfred Payton, who was giving us nothing. Yeah, so I think yeah. if we can find yeah. someone who can push the pace and play spry basketball, I think that would complete the offseason, and I really think we would look at it as a success. But it's still not over. I'm, I'm optimistic about it. I think our summer league roster could probably beat, you know, the Kings or one of these teams in the NBA. So <laughs> I like, I like the way, I like the way we're developing, but I just, I want to see just a little bit more commitment to playing a little faster. And I get nervous that sometimes we give Tibbs too much of the reign of our decision making. Yeah. So, okay. but that, but other than that, you know, we're a four C team running it back. Um, I, you know, I'm definitely glad to be here from last year. So. Appreciate you, bro. Let's go. Appreciate the call, man. My guy, See, Papa left. What's good, bro? Uh, just confirmed. It, the fourth year is a team option, option per Woj is a team option. So I do want to give you your props because you reported that it was starting at 18 million and it turned out to be 19 and a half for three years. It turned out to be race. three guaranteed years. And, and so. an extra year. I think that was the holdup. They were working out the parameters of the deal. Again, we did hear that. You heard it first on Knicks Fan TV, KnicksFanTV.com, that the Knicks and Evan Fournier were working on a deal. I did hear that earlier today. Shout out to the plug. Um, again, 
But, you know, we'll, we'll start on the positive. We'll, we'll keep it positive. We've been hearing a lot of negativity, so I'm going to flip it. On the positive, um, what I feel like Fournier will bring for this team is obviously a three-point shooting is first and foremost. Uh, a guy that can hit from the corners. In his limited in his limited time with Boston, 16 games, 46% from three on six attempts. That's those are nice numbers. I think he's going to give us uh, some some play, a little bit of playmaking, which he can put the ball on the floor, which I think is good. He can also get to the free throw line for you. He's fairly decent at drawing contact, and I think you got to like that as well in terms of having some diversity in your lineup. Where I think he he sets us back is going to be interesting to see how this team defends. I think this is the Bullock replacement. Obviously, this is the Bullock replacement. So you're going with Fournier, RJ, Julius, Mitch, and whoever your point guard is. The benefit of having um, uh, Bullock here was that ideally he would take that toughest cover. So if you're going to bring Rosen here to start, you know, Bullock would have been here to take on, you know, if you're going up against Dame or one of your, your premier point guards or so on and so forth. To give him a, a spell. How will Fournier help this team defense? Are we going to take a step back? Can we maintain? You know, or, or will we take a little bit of a, a regression? Time will tell. Contract wise, okay, I hope it can be flipped. I hope it can be flipped. You know what I'm saying? I was hoping for three, two plus one. Now they're giving him three plus one. See what happens for the future. A little bit lengthy for me, but overall, I, on a 1 to 10 for right now, I think I rate it, probably rate it a, a 6, 6, 7 right now in terms of the deal. What do you guys think? It's not bad. I mean, Fournier is, what, 28 years old? So four years, we're talking 32. So that you were talking, you got him for the extent of his prime, as you already pointed out. Good from the corner. He gets a, he's lethal from downtown. He can get to the rack, you know. Not this season because he was injured this season, but years prior, you know, he's usually in the 60th or highest percentile, finishing around 60% of his shots around the rim. So, you know, he can get to the, you can get to the cup very well and finish around there. Um, I like, I think it's, it's a step up in create offensive creativity over Bullock because right. Bullock really couldn't put on the floor, take it to the rack or do any of those things. You, what you got is that, okay, if Bullock's going to be your true three and D guy where he just defends the toughest assignment and just shoots from beyond the arc and maybe sometimes dribble in for a mid-range, Evan Fournier can do a little bit more than that. So offensively, what you're getting is something that you lacked out of Bullock. I think breaking if you need to news. relax. Breaking news. Yeah, it was breaking. Breaking, it was breaking. news. Derek Rose has agreed to a three-year, $43 wow. million dollar deal to return to the New York Knicks. Wow. Per <laughs> the family per is here, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Whoa, the family is here. Okay. And again, let's see what the third year is like. Oh, whoa. But I'll okay. say this. He Derrick Rose not Derrick Rose didn't sign that deal to play 20 minutes a game. Okay. All right. All right. Um, all right, Al. Let, let, let's finish up with Al and JD on, on Fournier, and then we'll we'll get to the Rose stuff. Go ahead, go ahead, Al. Finish up your points on Fournier. All right, all right. So the last thing, I guess the last couple of things I'll say on Fournier is that just offensively, if you need to give someone a break to help create the offense, you know, Randall can play make. RJ, if he can step up and do a little bit more playmaking this season, that'd be great. Then you have Fournier, another playmaker. So you now have three guys on the court that can now shoot from beyond the arc and also create for others. So that's good. You know, that's something I can look forward to. But defensively, I think we may take a step back to talk on that point. I don't consider Evan Fournier just like a like a shutdown defender. I think he's a good – I think he's, you know, above average to a good defender where he's not going to make you think twice – like oh wow we should have had Reggie Bullock and kept him around this season mm -hmm. but I think the defense will take a step back definitely for uh definitely for the starting unit but on the flip side the defense will take a step back but I think the offense takes a step forward so in my yeah. eyes it kind of evens out um I mean for me quickly I think as I mentioned earlier the theme for me this offseason as we start to see how this offseason is shaping up in free agency is the Knicks are going to have to rely on the young players to develop and get better and in my estimation, that means that RJ, welcome to the elite league. 
it's your turn. You have to now. You have to start taking these defensive assignments. Yeah. You have the physical build. Um. You have the strength. You played well against Ka- Kawhi. He gave you a lot of praise. Mm-hmm. Um. It's time to take a step up. Now is your time to take some of these defensive assignments and and get better as a player and you know continue to ascend for this franchise and be a corner. Make it difficult on this franchise to even think about ever. Uh, trading you so to me there's a lot of onus on rj in the perimeter which doesn't that then doesn't mean that our defense necessarily takes a step back and as i mentioned the resigning of noel hopefully mitch is healthy you 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 strengthen the paint in order to you know help compensate for a potentially weaker perimeter so that's how i see it fournier is a great shooter 55 percent from the corner three this year 52 percent the year before and you know he's a little bit of a shot creator, so I think I think it's a solid signing, and you know it's going to be on RJ in, in my opinion. Three years, forty-three million dollars for Derrick Rose, ladies and gentlemen. The Knicks are giving out bags like it's Christmas. Um, Fourteen mil for Rose. Welcome back, Rose and Tibbs reunited. The whole CAA, I mean the the whole uh, you know the uh, World Wide West thing. Look, you know, like, like I said, this was, uh, I think we, we needed him based on the way the dominoes were falling. It's a, it's a lengthy deal, man. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I wonder, I wonder, I, I wonder if he's the star. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, at I this wonder rate, what this means. you know, you gave Rose 14, you gave Fournier 19, you gave Burks Noel 10. Yo, Luca's a wild card. I'm gonna say it right now. I don't care. Luca is a wild card. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, he's a wild. I think he's a wild card. I can't wait to see him in summer league because if with this deal, um, I mean, let's see what happens with Dinwiddie and and Schroeder. Maybe you can still, you know, push Schroeder in 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 the one and one as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see because that I I don't I'm not I'm not mad at bringing Rose back. It's can he give us what he, we need from the starting position? Um, and on an over 82 game season, not a 72 game season, an 82 game season. And just, it just, you know, after that 25 minute mark, it just seemed like he would, he would break down in a lot of games. Yeah, there were games where he would give you 30 plus and he went off. You know, the, the Memphis game in Memphis, he went on a tear, delivered us and won that game. Um, but then on the flip side, of it, there was the Lakey game, the overtime game where. You know, it felt like he was coming home in a body bag. He came home from the Laker game and had to miss one of the final three home games because they were resting him, you know. Uh, gave it his all in game three against the Hawks, and, and I was watching it. You know, I was there for games one through four. And by the end of game four, man, I was like, yo, this, this guy has nothing left, man. He, you know, he came limping off on the bench and, and had nothing left. So my biggest question is, it, will he start? Yeah, Are they done going after point guards? Is Schroeder still in play? What do they feel about Vildoza? We'll see. But I think just based on the way the Dominoes felt, you know, bringing back D Rose was a was a no brainer. And and I don't want Schroeder. I'm just mentioning him as yeah, an option. Yeah, no tomatoes. For what's no left. tomatoes in the chat. Yeah, yeah. You no you, you mentioned name Schroeder. Everybody's ready to throw it at you. So. Yeah. No no tomatoes. No tomatoes. And, man. and I think one of the what are the early storylines, CP, as we, you know, as they start to resign a lot of these players is. Man, Tibbs is going to have some pressure next year with his fan base, man, because you're bringing a lot of those veterans back. And I think is I think fans want to see some of these young players get some burn. So I think that's something interesting to see as we see, you know, the offseason unfold. You know, it, Tibbs is bringing a lot of his guys back. Will that mean that they also, you know, if this rotation is going to stay the Snacks same? Or some yeah. of these young yeah. players going to get some yeah, opportunities I need, I need here. Grimes in that rotation, man. I, need Ron, I can't. Ron's I can't be rotation. having quickly play yeah. twelve minutes again. Facts. You know, again, Facts. can't be doing that. No. And I, if you're going to give Obi eleven minutes a game, might as well then look for a move or something. Yeah, yeah. How, how are you even going to increase his value if you're not? If you don't give him a real legitimate opportunity. All right. So so let's take a look at this. Right. So let's say the projected lineup right now. You have D Rose, uh, Fournier, RJ, Julius. And Mitch, that starting five is nice. I like it. It's I a like it. Starting five, yeah. I like, I like it. it. Now off the bench, I gotta go. IQ, 
Are we going IQ Burks Grimes? Grimes got to get in this mix, bro. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if honestly, I I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of give. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Grimes can actually earn something. I think he's a gamer and he'll just yeah. his natural ability will get him on the court. If yeah. if if this is if this is the roster, okay. If this is the roster, I could see him earning something. Right. That or Luca could potentially like surprise us in summer league because. You know, he's playing all right right now mm-hmm. uh, in the Olympics. So you could see him getting some minutes, too. You yeah, can have two combo Vildo, guards working Vildoza back there with this. IQ and, and Vildoza. <laughs> where's so, Vildoza in this mix? It's yeah. it's it's a toss-up, but I could see what, what you're going to have. Which, forget the point guard right now, but it would be like IQ. It would be Burks. You have Toppin and then Noel. And so really it's just are they going to – off season's <laughs> over. We got the team. Yeah. Let's go home. It's early, <laughs> early projections. Early projections. But uh, interesting debates, though, man. 